Welcome to One Book, One Review. Today's book is Eighth House by Sarah Grew. Reading this book took me a rather long time, mainly because I kept putting it aside or simply doing something else. At one point, I almost stopped reading it altogether, but I don't like doing that. So what is it about? In the first chapter, we meet John Thickman, a reporter who is on his way home from a visit to the Great Ape Language Lab. The reader is introduced to the bonobos and scientist Isabel Duncan. From then on, the story follows John, Isabel and the ape separately. After John's visit to the language lab, it is attacked by an animal rights group and the lives of everyone involved changes dramatically. John, who wants to stay on the story, is sabotaged by his own editor and ends up following his wife to LA where she finds a job. Isabel, who has been badly hurt in the explosion, learned about the betrayal of her fiancé. Now she invests all her remaining energy to get back together with the bonobos, who have been sold and are experiencing a lot of stress in their new environment. When I was thinking about what to say about this book, I realized that the book has a lot to say. John's story mainly centers on his and his wife's professional problems. They are both not where they want to be professionally and end up selling out before regaining their integrity. When Amanda starts working in Hollywood, she loses herself in a superficial society and tries to change herself to fit into this world. And John? He finds himself first researching trivial articles and then working for a tabloid. I think this is one of the stronger points of the novel, how John and Amanda do things they clearly object to, to further their careers or rather to keep their jobs. Unfortunately, John's story is also overshadowed by his mother-in-law and Amanda's wish to have children. He also seems to be distracted by his own thoughts of other women, making the reader expect some kind of adultery, although he is obviously devoted to his wife. Isabel Duncan's story focuses on her healing process and her trial to reconnect with the bonobos. She has to deal with a lot of physical and mental healing, as well as her fear for her own life and that of the apes. The reader perceives her powerless against the corporate world exploiting animals. Her story is similar to that of the great apes, who find themselves also at the mercy of an unknown stranger not knowing where they are going and what is happening to them. All this sounds like a promising read, but I'm sorry to say Apos isn't. There are too many details and distractions, plus narrative threads that lead nowhere. The story rambles along for a very long time before picking up speed at the end and getting everyone back on track as soon as they take control of their own lives again. As you can see, I'm a little torn here. There is a discrepancy between what you can get out of the book and the reading pleasure you get from reading the book. At the moment, I'm reading another Terry Pratchett book, Equal Rights. Thanks for watching One Book, One Review.